yourself? Yes, my name is Walter Leo. I'm a new professor here at the University of Environmental Technology. I started my work last November and sustainability is one of the areas I work with. And can you tell us a little bit about your work? What, what, what is your specialist area? Well, my work entails three main aspects. One of them is the research and sustainable development, you know, the way it is thought and practiced. The second one is about sustainability in the curriculum. How can you embed sustainability in higher education? And the third one, perhaps the most exciting one, is projects trying to translate sustainability principles into practice by means of projects. We are actually very active worldwide, hybrid in Europe, but also in Africa, and nearly all in Asia. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, can you um, give us a bit of an idea about how some of the ideas that you work with, particularly around sustainability in the curriculum, how you envisage those being used by others across this university or other universities? All right. Well, because of this complexity, the implementation of sustainability in the curriculum is not very easy. Some people regard it as too abstract, you know, too vague, and making the links is a very important thing. And uh, part of the work we do is try to show to people the connection between sustainability and the subjects. For instance, sustainability in arts, you know, arts can be a wonderful tool to raise awareness about environmental issues, but arts can be by expression, by, I don't know, by paintings, by poetry, you can bring across many very interesting messages in a very interesting way. If you had, say, let's say, um, a humanities faculty with politics and um, history, English, those kinds of things, have you got have you got sort of ideas about how they might work with um, aspects of sustainability in their country? Absolutely. I think one of the strengths of sustainability is the fact that it can be contextualized. That's the key. For example, you have discussion about politics. You can talk about European Union policy, you can talk about agricultural policy and how that influences the sustainability debate. We can also use discussions on language, English language, for example, you know, checking texts and correcting the, uh, correcting the text or checking the accuracy. There are many ways to bring this message across and the key thing is to make this context link so it should be perceived as relevant to them and not something too distant. Quite often people work with, with ideas in the curriculum, so for instance the skills um, agenda for many years and the employability agenda indeed. People have worked with these agendas and when they design a curriculum, they either have a standalone unit, that's where mm -hmm. all our employability is, right. or they scatter it throughout the curriculum. Right. And they will have a little bit there and a little bit there, and it's where it's relevant to time. Can, can you talk a bit about your feelings towards those two models, and which one is preferable to the other? I understand. Well, again, it's a question of uh, what is the context. In some cases, in the education, for example, of environmentalists, it could be wise to have a, a kind of model sustainability. Uh, in others, it could perhaps just be just a unit. For example, uh, in one of the courses we are designing in Hamburg, for example, is meant for health educators. So it is a unit in the course, meaning that the students who are going to be trained to be health professionals, mm. they know what sustainability is, they know about things like recycling, like reuse, you know, and how, how, apply, how that applies to healthcare. So the key is that how can we put this, this um, element, which are really outside the normal health debate, into the health sector, so that we not only have a perhaps more efficient health sector, but also a more sustainable one. Sometimes sustainability is seen as slightly worthy or, or perhaps um, an idea that isn't very appealing. Mm -hmm. How do you think it can be made more appealing to students? Okay, I think one of the best ways to make it more appealing is to bring it close to their contact, their today lives. The students practice sustainability every day. From the time they come in the morning, they would brush their teeth and get the water running when they have the shower. Most of the things we do have a sustainability dimension and the key is to bring it to their context that we can understand and also perhaps change habits and behaviors. The same also applies for the subject they are studying at university. No matter if you study economics or arts or engineering, sustainability is uh, all across it. The way you design buildings, the way you plant buildings which use less energy, which are more energy efficient, is also sustainability. So making the context I think is a, is a very important thing. So have you got any examples of when you've worked across disciplines? There are, there are many examples. One which comes across my mind is in the course we teach on architecture. 
Again, we have students coming from architecture, students from engineering, but also environmental science students who will learn a little bit about you know, how houses are planned, but how they can be um, more energy efficient, how they can use perhaps less, less water. So students come from different subjects, environmental science students, students from architecture, engineering, come together and discuss a common topic. That's very important for them because the learning is cross-sectorial, but also shows them, wow, there's something really useful in our future career as professionals later on. Okay, thank you very much. Any, any examples of that kind of interdisciplinary work with humanity students? Yes, uh, we have a competition a couple of years ago on poetry. And students were asked to seek a context and then try to translate it into poetry. And all different kind of things came, you know, to find the place they, they live with their children, how it was. Uh, one student from Africa described how his little village in Africa was severely damaged by environmental uh, problems. And they come together and uh, they discuss these issues and then they learn from one another. So the key is really to make the context and then the things go by themselves. And what, what place do you think that sustainability should hold in the curriculum? What, what, why should it be there? What would, what would be your case for, for that? Right. As we become globalised and we have to be aware of the different issues which influence the disciplines we study. In the old-fashioned way, if you are trained engineer, they are only engineers. They don't really have much information on social aspects or economic aspects. That's why I think sustainability must take a central part in the curriculum, in a sense that we create a new cadre of students who are not only very good in their own subject, but also have a wider view of the world. And that really goes around politics, about economics, about um, legislation on the environment. So we can pull these things all together. And does that kind of lead you to a, a sort of global citizenship position? Would you, would, is that a term that you would use? Certainly, certainly. Sustainability is very linked with, with uh, citizenship. As I mentioned before, each one of us has an uh, influence on the environment every day. Sometimes we don't realise. If you take the train or take the bike, if you walk or drive, there are different influences. If you can make students aware of that, then again, there will be create a new generation of well-informed and also well-motivated future citizens.